want to sound preachy tonight. I want to make it more lively for everybody to relate. But let me give you a topic. Wisdom for extraordinary marriage. Wisdom for extraordinary marriage. Wisdom. I need to let you know that I, I have been privileged to write a couple of books and we came with, we have 129 titles to the glory of God. My wife and I have been privileged to write 129 titles since 1999. And uh, we came with some few copies there. But tomorrow, we are going to be doing what you call book work. What did I call it? We are going to sit down, pick one or two of our books and work on it. Husband and wife, we work on it together. You will never forget anything we read and we explain by the author. So I'm going to announce the amount to you. So you are going to get your copy. When you get your copy, when you are coming tomorrow, you will bring them. Another book I want you to get is called Eight Desperate Need of Your Wife. It's one of my best selling books. Eight Desperate Need of Your Husband, Eight Desperate Need of Your, of your Wife. The two of them together, husband will get one. Wife, for the first time, you will know the need of your wife. Eight desperate need. That is to say, she needs this thing desperately. It's like an oxygen to her. And that's where I'm starting tonight. Now, but let me read the scripture, Proverbs 4 7. Proverbs 4 7. The Bible says, Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding please please i'm privileged to be here tonight you are privileged to be listening to me if i were you i will soak myself into the thing oh in 1980 89 somebody gave me a a case a cassette player a cassette uh, you know cassette was the thing we we're using in those days a message by bishop bishop wale okay what was the title? The title is Don't Lose Your Focus. Don't Lose Your Focus. As at that period, my life had no meaning. I, was, I didn't have any focus. I, was, I knew who I, who I am, but I couldn't know. So I was thinking, I can't go. I, it was. I listened to that message more than 15, 16 times. In fact, I listened to it until it broke. You know, you remember cassettes? It, I, the man will, still, will shout. If, as he's preaching, we just stop again. Don't lose your focus. Don't, he will shout again and again. He must have said, don't lose your focus more than 40 times in that, in that one hour, 20 minutes message. I stroke myself into that message. The first thing I told God is, what is my focus? Who should I be? Then I discovered that I would be a, child, a man of God. In which area? In the area of marriage. So when I confirmed this, I shook myself into it. Because that message is still ringing in my head. Don't lose your focus. I told Baba for the first time when we met in Sheraton that day. And he came for... At my university in Sheraton. I sat in, I said, Daddy, you didn't know this message, you must have forgotten. No. He said, Do you still have that cassette? I said, I don't have it again, but I have it here. God, I said, I would have loved to listen to it. Don't lose your focus. I want this weekend to be a life of a time of a counter for your marriage. Tomorrow service, tonight, especially tomorrow evening. I want you to put everything, to do everything, to make sure that you get it right. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all that getting, do what? Get understanding. Proverbs 24, verse 3 to 4. Wisdom for extraordinary marriage. The Bible says, true wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding, it is established. And by knowledge, shall the chambers be filled. Oh, studio, why are you not giving us scriptures? I would love everybody to read it. True wisdom is an house builded. 
it's not true nagging it's not true fighting sister it's not true sexual denial of your husband i will not give him my body i will not he will not come to his senses by that no you will only knock down the engine it's not true true disrespecting of your husband through shouting through making noises it's not by, by 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 fighting each other it's not by hurting each other how can we make marriage work through what wisdom i want you to say it again through what through what how can we build a house through wisdom it's not by strength do you know that if you don't have a brick layer among us if they give us enough uh, uh, cement blocks and they ask all of us here to build a three bedroom flat it may take off for years am i making sense it may be, and when we finish the house we have some, so many defects none of us has ever built anything again but they gave us all the material and they said we are start building with all and many of us are phd older we are professor among us but you don't know how to build you won't be able to build it unfortunately we enter into marriage with the mindset of a boyfriend we enter into marriage with the mentality of kabiesi do you know african kabiesi mentality man kabiosi unquestionable incontrovertible you can't question him he's the head of the family the head of the family lion of the tribe of the home mm. i am the head of this home impenetrable you can't penetrate him you can't influence him he's a garrison commander that is him whatever he says is the final but what about the semi-final he still owned the semi-final too even the quarter final he was the one that has all the finals because he lacked wisdom he lacks what wisdom wisdom, wisdom. pursue wisdom pursue it pursue wisdom when last have you read the book on marriage uncle it, i asked a man in Lagos. i asked them in a in a program like when last have you read the book about marriage one evil man said he don't take it's so true he said he don't take pastor he don't take he don't take you too many of us he don't take many of us are running we are raising children you have never read the book about children in your life have you ever read the book about parenting about fatherhood yes sir that's why you are fucking up it's not because of the devil it's because you lack wisdom you lack wisdom and unfortunately we can't impart wisdom on you by laying hand upon you just the way i can't impart physics on you without you reading physics books lack of wisdom is the problem in that marriage your wife is not as bad as you think but you lack wisdom to handle her your husband is not as bad as you think but you lack wisdom to handle him so men are married to women that are worse than your wife and they are living fine i spoke to a man sometimes ago ah he says he said we always say the wife is so domineering for you see the way the man the woman the man takes it he said ah i love my family i said why he said ah, this is a woman that if everybody want to talk she will take over all of us or she will be the one talking talking ha ah, only any time anybody want to shit me i just call my wife can you see the way he sees it but you you are calling your wife that she's a talkative you didn't harness the grace i was in a number state but is it a number state uh, uh, Happy state for a program some time ago. During the program, uh, some people were sitting down. I said, Okay, hold your wife, pray for your wife. But there was a man there, the wife was not around. I said, What about your wife? He said, My wife is not around. He will soon be here. He will soon be here. I said, My portable will soon be here. My portable. My portable. At the stage, I said, Your wife has not come. I said, When my wife comes, I will show you my wife. She's a portable woman. By the time the woman came, the woman was like this. Was as tall as this to the man. 
almost like a dwarf. Immediately the woman came, she, he brought the man, the woman to me and said, can you see my portable? Now carry the woman. He said, when they see everybody carry your wife, nobody can carry you better, I will carry my own. Can you see the way he, he, he interpret the heart? Right? That's supposed to be a problem. In Ikorodu, sometime in Winner Chapel in Korodu, we had a program. Just like this one, but in another room. I said, where is your wife? I said, my wife will soon come. My wife will soon come. Later, I said, there's a woman sitting down there. Look, maybe your wife has come. He said, no, 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 no. Later, I said, what? Ah, he said, pastor, don't worry yourself. He said, when my wife comes, you will know that my wife has come. I said, why? She said, she's a magnificent woman. Magnificent woman? I, don't, I didn't understand what he was talking about. But suddenly, I saw a giant coming. As tall, as fat, and she was coming like this. She called me and said, Daddy, that's why. <laughs> Can you see my wife? <laughs> Can you see my wife? Magnificent woman. By the time she in, stood before the woman, she was like this. On the shelf. It's like when you carry your baby. She can't you see that my wife is magni magnificent. It is what you, whatever Adam called her, that's it. Wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. Place your right hand upon yourself. I say, I receive wisdom to handle my wife. I receive wisdom to handle my wife in the name of Jesus. So now, let me quickly now tell you seven killers of marriage as far as wisdom is concerned. Number one, illusion. What do I call it? Illusion. You know, these things are according to the way we handle knowledge. So what is illusion? Illusion is you think you know and you don't know at all. But you are teaching people what you don't know. That's what is happening in many marriages. Everybody can teach somebody about marriage, but everybody is fucking up in marriage. Because a majority of people are illusional. Let four people sit down and talk about women. Four men. Ah! Women. Fear women. Fear women. Oh. Fear women. Everybody is talking. Everybody is talking. And everybody is not making sense. And none of them has ever read a book about marriage in their lives. None of them have ever attended a meeting like this. If it is the announcement we made about this meeting, the whole place is supposed to be jam pack. The whole place is supposed to be jam pack. Pastor, the last time we did this program in London, everybody paid 100, 100 pounds. 100 pounds. Multiply it by 2,000. That the pounds is now. And people came. Because they know what it takes to divorce. How much you are going to pay a lawyer. They know that hundred dollars, hundred pounds is nothing. A woman said she spent two hundred thousand dollars before she got a protatic divorce. Two hundred thousand dollars. The fourth child, child custody. They had three children. The, the lawyer was just bringing bills, bills. In fact, when uh, when we try to help. And they said they want to go and withdraw the court, the case from the court. And they told the lawyer, the lawyer said, we have an agreement. I've given you the bill. Pay me my bill, I'll go and withdraw it. He, he collected his money. He collected his money. That's why when they now say, oh, go and buy books, so oh, everything is 15,000 naira. say, hey, it's too costly. The cost of divorce is something else. The trauma you are going to pass through. The void. The battle. The distraction. Distraction. It's not a joke. Hold your wife now and look at the faces of each other and say, I value you. Say, I value you. Oh, you don't understand what you are saying. I say, I value you. I didn't say you should shout on her. You will say it with a bedroom voice. Say, I value you, baby. You see, a friend of mine lost his wife about a few weeks ago. He told me something that made me to sit tight. He said, don't just imagine the, 
the death of his spouse. Say so for the first time, I have to know where they buy tomato. For the first time, the voice, daddy, daddy, is now rising in that house more than 200 times. They have five children. Daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want biscuit. Daddy, I want this. Because there's no more mommy. Say, I now appreciate my wife. Daddy, I want this. Daddy, I want this. You know, they call you less in the house. They're calling somebody. They're calling somebody. Don't think you know when you don't know. Brother, get books. Read books. Tomorrow, swallow yourself, soak yourself. By the grace of God, we've known each other very well now. My uh, pastor Kenabi has become my pa now. We just the last the, when we met in the in the office within thirty minutes we jail. We jail. We have some places I will go and minister. I will say I can never go there again. But this place, even if, if we don't come here, I will come again. I will just come one day and say, oh yeah, give me the microphone. I feel at home in this place. Maybe because we share the same place we are coming from. Don't be illusional, brother. You don't know. What? Who is a woman? You don't know. And you are believing with one. Why do they call them woman? Oh, oh, maybe you didn't know the reason why we call them female. Female. Female simply means feeling male. Male that is being controlled by feelings. That's a whole lot of things. They can say nonsense at times. It's part of the feeling. At times she was thinking, ah, ah, why are you thinking? Why are you talking like a baby like this? That's the feeling. Tell her to tell you a story. How was your day? She will first go to Yemekun, come back from, uh, 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 go to Ore, and uh, tell you the story. She's still talking, no? She has not started talking, no? <laughs> Men, am I making sense? My wife called me about four times before we got here. Despite the fact that she was in the middle of a party. She was in the middle of a party, yo. If she's not in a party, every mile, every kilometer. Immediately she called the last time, by the time we got there, she didn't call. So she will be calculating the time we are going to finish now. If she called, the time she expect us to finish and I didn't call, she will call my manager. Hello? My Lord, call. If you want to be a crazy man, when you call you, you say, What's the problem with you? Why are you monitoring me? When a woman grows this skin to the lesson that she stops caring, you are finished. You are finished. You can call me one name, she doesn't bother again. She can even meet you on top of another woman, she doesn't bother again. You are finished. Life is finished with you. Illusion. Number two is delusion delusion you know but what you know is wrong and you are not ready to change it even when you know it's not working you are delusional you know that but what you know it did not work for your dad but you are copying him even you are not ready to change it even when you know it's not working you are delusional Number three is ignorance. You don't know, and you know that you don't know. But you are not ready, and you are not ready to do anything to know. You are ignorance. Number four, stupidity. You don't know, but common sense is telling you, but you refuse to listen. Then you are stupid. You don't know. You are going somewhere. You saw every car turning back. You didn't know there's no road there. But you saw people turning back. What should common sense tell you? There's a problem there. We should turn back. Although common sense is not really the best. Because at times common sense, common sense can, can even misdirect you. Because common sense is not common. One day, we were going somewhere and it was old up in Lagos. And uh, there was a standstill. 
Then we saw people turning to a particular place. A particular place. Ah, people are turning. Then we followed. We didn't know where we were going. We didn't know that the guy that's leading us did not know the road too. <laughs> then we got to a stage. Then we said, then there's a sign, but welcome to Lepers Colony. Everybody began to turn back again. <laughs> Everybody began to turn back again. That's common sense. Told us to follow. But at times, common sense can be... But we are some that common sense will tell you. You saw people going to that place and falling. What are you supposed to do? You're supposed to go there. You saw people beating their wives, ending in jail. You are still beating your what? Your own. You saw people abusing their husband, losing their husband. I have, a, I have something here. I will post it tomorrow on my Facebook page. 21 ways to destroy a good marriage. 21 ways to destroy a good marriage. Go and follow me on Pastor B.C. Adewale. You will see it there tomorrow. 21 ways. There are little, little things you just need to do. Marriage will be destroyed. So don't be stupid. Tell somebody, don't be stupid. Oh, is he an, is he an abusive word? He's a warning. He's a warning. He's a warning. Then we have number five. We have foolishness. What did I call it? Foolishness. You know. And what you know is right. But you will never do what you know. Then you are foolish. You know. What you know is right. Sister, you know that wives submit to your own husband. You read it in the Bible. You attended a meeting like this. And you can see women that are respectful, they are honorable, they are submissive, having a, having a cool in their marriage. But you will never follow them. Then you are foolish. Then you are foolish. This is the state of knowledge. Another one is intellectual foolishness. That's a mega foolishness. Professoral foolishness. You know what you know is right. And what you know, you are even teaching others and it is working for them. But you will never do it. You have intellectual foolishness. So you are, in you are intellectually fool. Then number seven, madness. Madness. You know, you know the truth. You were told the truth. You read the truth. Pastor Akinabi preached the truth severally. You can see the truth in their own marriage. Common sense is telling you about the truth. You write books about the truth. People warn you about the truth. You are even teaching, teaching people the truth. But you will never do the truth. At this level, you even part it the other way. And it is not working. Yet, you will not turn back. At this stage, you are not foolish. You are mad. In the level of madness. Even when the thing is injuring you, you will never turn back. A man came to my office with his wife. And the wife said, I said, what's the problem? He said, the major problem is, tell my, wife, my husband to stop taking Uber. I said, Uber? Do any, any of us know anything about Uber here? You know Uber? Ah, you don't know Uber. Because me too, I didn't know Uber until that day. Do you know Uber? Uh -huh, you don't know Uber? You don't know Uber? Said, so tell my husband to stop taking Uber. I said, when should he not take Uber? If he's not taking his car to the office, he can take Uber. He can take Shotla. We have the one we call Shotla in Lagos. Shotla is buses. We have these buses in Lagos now. They behave like Uber. We are going to book them online. 
and you are, you are going to join them in a bus stop in the morning or in the evening. You must have paid in the night. I mean, maybe 24 hours too. So when you get into the bus, you just mention your name, they will check. That's all. There's no conductor. And you, you have told them the bus stop, you are going to drop down through the hub. And when they get to the bus stop, nobody called the bus stop, you just come down. It's another realm in Lagos now. They call it Shotla. But this one, it's not Uber, it's not Shotla. I said, why should you say your husband should not take Shotla or Uber? He said, both of them were just laughing. <laughs> yeah, just like being pastor, you bong pie. <laughs> no, I don't love it. I said, what happened? He said, Pastor, Uber is human being. Uber, human being. The Ashawo you you book online. The Ashawo you book online. He said, let me show you. If you say any available woman in the Kedja now, their picture will be popping up. Just like the Uber. I said their picture will be coming up. They will do like this. They will do like this to you. The one that will do like this. And he did it. He said, should I show you the thing? Should I give you the link? I said, I don't want the link. <laughs> said, they will be pumping up. This young man, 24-year-old, married. We saw on that hub that he has slept with, um, on, on that website that he has slept with, with 18, 18 Ubers. 18 Ubers only. That is the one the website can show also. I said, you are not even afraid of infection. I said, Pastor, almost every week I have infection. I've gone to hospital several days. Why can't you stop? What is that? That's madness. So I spend a lot of money for hotel, for clinical. I said, you have a beautiful 23-year-old girl like this. 20, the, the woman said, he will, he will not even sleep with me. He will not even sleep with me. I will beg him, beg him, beg him to sleep with me. He will not even sleep with me. Some people are mad though. Madness. Brother, some foolishness are grown up to become a what? Madness. You better check yourself now. Are you illusional? Are you delusional? Are you ignorant? Are you foolish? Are you mad? Check yourself. You know that it can never end well when you are beating your wife and you are still beating. In fact, some people will beg, I will never beat you again. I will, as, if, as if you are talking to children. Talking to, 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 to. I met a 68-year-old uh, woman being beaten by the husband, 69-year-old. Baba Tutin know me. Baba Tutin know me. Madness madness. You need to turn back. Sister, you shut the door of your room. And for one week, two, three weeks, four weeks, your husband cannot touch you. And you know that it will not end well. You know that it will not end well. Many people will never read. You are fighting about marriage. Get books about sex. You are, you are, getting, you are fighting about sex in your marriage. Get book about sex in marriage. Bro, sister, read. Read book about sex, have a book. Somebody shout hallelujah. So to round it off, let me now give you one or two things. If you want to build the wisdom for, I mean, if you want to be an extraordinary marriage, number one thing you must know, get God to be at the center of your marriage. Let God be at the what? Psalm 127, verse 1. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Please, sir, always be the head, spiritual head of the family. Pray together. Go on retreat. Go on retreat together. Raise altars. Personal altar. Write it down. Personal altar. I 
time you wake up very early beyond anybody has demand let your children find you wake let your noise wake them up at times at times your wife should tell your children don't disturb daddy that is praying that is a glorious thing that is praying that you know you must not disturb daddy that is praying and your voice should go up at times for them to hear that you are praying you are praying to God and you are teaching your children to pray. You are teaching them to pray. So build personal altar number two. So mommy two, build personal altar to all the wives. Be a Deborah in the house. At times you pray all night for your, for your husband and children. You pray all night. Number two, build couples altar. The time husband and wife would pray together. Pray. Pray for your children personally. Pray for your children. Check the life of your children and list the defects you see in their life and make it a point of prayer. The child that is lazy, write it down. It's like Jumi is lazy. Don't say Jumi is lazy. It's like Jumi is lazy. The one that does not want to read. It's like, so, so, so does not want to read. The one that does not love anything spiritual, list all these things and make it a prayer, a prayer project. I have a book here that we call, Oh Lord, Anoint My Children for Greatness. 680 prayer points. What you will do is, you will pick the picture of a child, then you sit down with all the 680. Don't pray for them together on it. Pray all the 680 on a child. Pick the second child. Pray the third child. When you finish, start again. Start again. It touches 34 anointings that your children must carry in life. Do you know what they call anointing for godly taste? If your children does not have it, they will never serve the Lord. Anointing for godly taste. As a teenager, that anointing fell upon me. It's the first anointing you will receive before you receive, before you receive salvation, before you receive the baptism of Holy Ghost. When it fell upon me, I just love to go before the Lord. Whenever they are having VG, I will be in church. I will go. I will get there at time. I will discover that it's a VG for pregnant women. <laughs> when I will still go. When I will still go. I go. I just fell in love with God. Among my siblings, I don't very love anointing for godly taste. Ah, may your children receive it. I said, may your children receive it. Anointing for godly taste. It's a major one. Anointing to marry right. Anointing to enjoy marriage. To enjoy marriage. You need to do it. So when you when you round off, just go there. Everybody go and get them. So I told you. How many authors have I mentioned? How many authors? Number one. Number two. Then we have the congregational author. You should join a church like this regularly for prayer meetings. Be, and enjoy it when you say it's time to pray in church. Enjoy it whenever we declare fasting. Enjoy it. Congregational prayer. The fourth one is family altar. Time, daddy, mommy, and the children will pray. Another one is network altar. Have friends, have prayer partners that you pray together. Stop having gossip partners. There are very many in church. When we finish in church, you will see them outside there. They will do fellowship after fellowship. One night, they will not go. But they will not say anything with sense. It's nonsense they will be saying. Can't you see that altar? Can't you see that choir? Can't you want to see better you? They are this, that, 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 that. How you, you use half of that period to just pray? Just enter into your car, two mummies, two mummies, and they sat down together. You can tell you, you can go and drop the husband. Husband can go and drop the husband. He can be inside the car. And you pray for the next one now. Is it crazy for dollars? You say, Craig, where's Pastor Gideon? There's a particular pastor that the husband, the mommy, the mother, 
the mother will carry a pillow. I mean, his pillow. And they will go to a church. The other mother will carry a pillow too. I've forgotten the name of this man. We carry the pillow. The pillow of his own, uh, our own child too. They all, they are pillow, pillow partners. And they will come, put the pillow of their children on ground, and pray, and pray, and pray, and pray, and pray. All the two children are great children today. Through the power of pillows. You know, that's where the children are placing their brain. Every night. It's, there's a connectivity. That's the only place you will rest your head. And the boy will do it eight hours every day. The mother will soak it. Drop it on the bed for the baby. The baby will sleep. Wake up. Mama will take you to prayer again. And the guy began to get to know God. Both of them are great men of God today. Because of the power of praying parents, praying mothers. Please stop all the gossip partners. It's time to connect what? Prayer partners. People, you can pray for your children together. Pray for your husband. Pray for your wife together. This is very important. Let me pick one more. Know the desperate need of your wife and the desperate need of your husband. Desperate need of each other. What's number one need of a woman in marriage? Okay, let's start with men. What's number one need of a man in marriage? Can somebody tell me? Number one need of a man in marriage. Oh, please tell me. Men, kill a fair? Respect. Respect. Is it, is, is it respect? Yes. So men, I mean women, number one need of your husband is what? Respect. Give him. Don't allow him to demand for it. Respect him. He may not deserve it though, with his attitude. Give him. He will soon deserve it. Am I talking? Nobody should respect your husband more than you. Though he normally misbehaves at times, so when he look for sex, when he's looking, when he's looking for sex, the way he cries, the way he shouts, make you to disrespect him. <laughs> it's not about that, though. Don't respect him because of who he is. Respect him because of who you want him to be. The person you want him to be. And the glory of God upon his life. Don't respect him because of his profession. Respect him because of his position. If the governor of this state comes in, he can be a 23-year-old man. If he comes in, what, will, what are we going to do? All of us will, st will stop what we are doing and we will rise up. Are we respecting that 23-year-old man? No, we are respecting the office. We are respecting the office. Your husband is the president of the house. Can you look at him and say, Your Excellency, sir. Say, Your Excellency, sir. Sister, don't look at your phone again. Look at your Your Excellency. Uh -huh. Say, Your Excellency, sir. KBS, you. Uh -huh. Your husband is the king. Is the Excellency. When you give him his regard, he will begin to regard you. Am I talking? No. When a, woman, when a man gets enough respect from his wife, you know what happened to that man? He lose the key of the, of the head to the woman. You give it to that woman. You'll be hearing, is that what you want? Is that what you want? The woman with every of your suggestions will, will be, is that what you want? But when a man discovers that you are not respectful, you know what he will do? He will always resist you. Even when you are right. You will now be having so many arguments, nonsense arguments. You will argue. You too, so you have mouth, blade in your mouth. No, 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 that's me. You just discover that you are not moving forward. But when you honor him, you don't wake up a man by 1 a.m. and say, no, 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 no. Get up, get up. We need to talk. We need to talk. You see, it's one of the most foolish things you can do on the planet Earth as a wife. You must never, in fact, even if it's in the afternoon, you must never tell your husband that we need to, we need to talk. There are better ways to do it. Sweetheart, I want to, I want to tell you something. When you say we need to talk, it's a call to war. It's a call for battle. Po, 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 po. It's time to fight. The man is somewhere around uh, Ondo. 
And they say, where are you? Say, I'm at Tondo now. Where are you? Say, I'm coming to Akure. Okay, my boy, we need to talk. All of my your last day to go to Delhi. You don't be thinking, Kilo what will he say? What will he say? What will he say? And you don't wake up a man by 1 a.m., by 2 a.m. You are not his mother. Am I talking? It was our mom that normally do those things in those days. They wake you up among, around 4 a.m. when your mind is still a virgin so that you can hear it very well. You don't do it. There are ways to talk to a man that will listen. I will teach you tomorrow. You see the way you are holding my brother like this? You see the way you are holding him? There's nothing you talk to his head that will not enter. There's nothing. You are, as you are touching him, those small, small, stupid guys, they know what to do. IG or police. Um, 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 immigration chairman. Um, uh, what do we call it again? The head of the custom. The head of the army. People that will control him then can be 21 year old girl. But they will lie down on their chest and be playing with their, be, be, be playing with the allergy, allergy. Me, I want to open my office in Dubai. I say, nah, 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 nah. So you want? Okay, okay. Kabiru, give me my, my checkbook. Give Yanni Yan, Yanni Yan, give him uh, 100 million naira. Give her 100 million naira. But they will not stand with allergy and say, allergy, I need money now. Don't you think your head? I need to talk nonsense to your senseless head so that you can talk. That's why women are losing their husband to those stupid wise girls. They are wise in their own generation. They don't stress them. One girl told me, I said, but say that the only thing we don't stress them. Then we don't stress them. They find our place as a place of solace, a place of rest. He said, even when they are with us, their wife will be calling them and be lassing them. You will not come again. You see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you isn't that my madam? Now you they give me hope. Now you they give me rest. Now you they give me rest. I think we need to change now. Respect your husband. There are 38 ways you can be disrespecting a man. And you will not know. When you get the book, you will understand. How many ways? 38 ways. And there are 108 colorful ways you can be respecting him. In our own days, when we were younger, our mother normally had special share for our daddy. How many of us remember that? Uh, my mama would say, Agaba, Agaba Barare knew. Agaba Barare. Did you look at Agaba Barare? Did you look at There's a special share. There's a special cup of Barare. Agaba Barare. There's a special cup. What is wrong with our generation? You say, well, how can I respect Tunde? We went to Futa together. Uh, even if you had the one that food, the food built in Futa, he's still the head. Immediately he became your husband, even if you are older, he's the class captain. Honor him. Am I ministering to somebody? And immediately you begin to honor him, you will be the conductor of his life. In Lagos, now conductor, they control the driver. Now conductor. You will never touch the steering, you know, but we just, oh, gami, oh, wo, wale, egbe, temale, oh, wo, oh, wo, oh, ya, oh, wale, oh, gami, oh, shodi, oh, shodi, oh, shodi, wale, kwe, lusensi, eh. And when the conductor is angry with you, he will say, Oga, me, I want where the locals go, pa, 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 pa. Oga, we pack without sense. I'm for sure. I mean, don't want where I want. Don't want where I want. I want where I want where He didn't even ask what happened. He didn't even ask. A man can get to that craziness level that every nonsense you say, he buys. That the level they will say you have washed your distance for him. At the level, but you need to respect him. It's not sex, so sex is not number one. No, it's respect. Create a palace in your home, and your husband will always be the king, and you will always be the queen forever. Create a palace. Create a palace. Am I talking? Forget about the nonsense they are telling you on Instagram, all the nonsense they are telling you on uh, on Twitter, on Twitter. Many of them they are just doing it to, to get follow. They know what they are doing at home. They are just doing it to get uh, likes. They don't do it at all more. They are very wise, oh. So number one duty, number one need of a man is what? Respect. That's the only one I will talk about. The second one, I will be talking about it tomorrow. The number one need of your husband, I've spoken about that. Then what's number one need of a wife at home? What's number one need? Women, talk to us. Men, talk to us. What's number one need? 
You know what? Anytime I had this question, they normally confuse me. Now, all of us agree that it is respect for men. Am I correct? Why you guess normally confuse us? Somebody is saying care. Somebody is saying money. Somebody is saying, <laughs> Somebody is saying love. Women. Is it love? Is it attention? Uh -uh. Can you see now? Hello. Women. Even women do not know what they want. <laughs> you see, they are thinking, if I say love now and it's not giving me money. You see? Number one need of a woman in marriage, you will see it in the book. You will see it. But it is not love. Yes. It is not care. What is it? Huh? It is not attention. What is it? What is love? What is affection? It's not affection. What is it? It's not money. What is it? And we know the man himself. That's attention. What is number one? <laughs> What's number one need of a woman? And you guess here that alone. Number one need, should I tell you? Yes. Ah, number one need, and this will revolutionize your marriage. Number one need of a woman in marriage is protection. 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 When a woman has not married you, her number one need is love, affection. Because her father is protecting her. That's why when you give notes to all the girls in the house, they will write love, 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 love. But as soon as a woman gets married, even her definition of love change. When a woman feels secure, that's the only one, that's the only way she will feel loved. Is somebody hearing me? Ha. Now listen to this. What is protection? Protection is securing her and her future. Securing, being, being faithful to her. She can sit down without fear. She doesn't need to, to, to be afraid where you are now. In fact, if you are not buying card, that's not a problem. Women, am I talking? Of course, card is good. Of course, saying I love you regularly is good. If you are not even saying it, but you call her. Where are you? It's raining now. Close the door. Are you secure? Are you all right? Where are the children? Everybody, are you okay? 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 And you are in Lagos. You still remember it. I'm, I'm, I'm told that it's raining in Akure now. Are you all right? Please open my email address, my Gmail, and check so so, -so mail for me and reply. You even gave her your... Then what about your phone? Mm, we are getting to the cocoa. If your wife cannot know your, your password to your phone, she will never feel secure. And somebody said, but I'm not checking, I'm not checking her phone. You don't need to check because you it's not it's not it's not your need. But for them, I see catch my wife several watching my phone, checking my phone. <laughs> She just want to, she just want that assurance. It's like when you have three bedroom flat, four bedroom, you don't marry a girl. I now told the girl, three bedroom, you can enter the place. But this fourth one, don't ever enter. Women, how will you feel? And the, the room is empty, oh. Something is not inside, oh. But what will happen to her? She will never have peace. Now, every one of us that rented three bedroom, the fourth bedroom is your phone now. Open the room now. If your husband, if your wife can see your nakedness, how can, how can she not be able to see your, your phone? Now listen to me before we rise up to prayer. If your wife cannot have password to your phone, cannot enter into your phone, you are doing something immoral or something illegal. You are doing something immoral 
If you don't do, if you are not doing any of the two, then give her your pain now. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. All men, rise up on your feet. Give your phone to your wife. And tell your wife the password now. She knows your own password. Aha. Anybody whose wife does not know it, give it to her now. Ah. Then place your right, place your hand on her shoulder. 